Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So after all of the things that reporter Ellie Setback has personally said about Devin Haney, he is now apologizing. Well, he didn't apologize on his channel or he didn't issue a public apology. He apologized to the Haney's when they were in Saudi Arabia. Now, the first thing I want to ask fans, at least the fans that feel the same way about Devin Haney that Ellie Setback feels, I want you guys to tell me in the comment section, how do you guys feel about Ellie Setback apologizing for everything that he has said that you guys say about Devin as well? This further exposes how disingenuous Ellie Setback is. This man doesn't even have integrity when he's being a racist. You know, racist people like Ellie Setback, who said it many times before, defending things that he said when he was dissing Black Lives Matter and praising All Lives Matter. Racists, they always say, hey, that's my opinion. As if having opinions and views towards a particular race is different from being a racist. But here's my point. No matter what your views and opinions are, you're supposed to stand on that. You don't just pull out when the water gets too hot. And that is exactly what he did. So Bill Haney, he responds to Ellie apologizing by saying this. Ellie is a real snake. He has been exposed. No coming back from that shit. He's done. You see, what makes Ellie's apology so disingenuous is even after Devin Haney beat Regis Progray, knocked him down, hurt him multiple times in a fight, and put on such an impressive performance that even all of Devin Haney's own rivals have been praising him. Fighters like Ryan Garcia, Shakur Stevenson, even past opponents like George Cambosis, and even Regis Progray himself, went from saying Devin Haney has no power to saying he has power. And even his trainer, his strength and conditioning coach, acknowledged after that fight that Devin Haney does have power. So with all of these boxers and trainers that are praising Devin Haney, Ellie Setback was still dissing Devin Haney after the fight. That's what makes the apology so fake. Because if Ellie was smart and he wanted to really issue a good fake apology, then he should have ate a little crow. He should have went on Twitter like he always does or even make a video. And he should have said, you know what? Devin Haney is better than I thought he was. He has more power than I thought he had. And he put on a great performance. Congratulations, champ. Now, see, a fake apology like that may have even gotten some people to believe that he was being sincere. But he didn't do that. He continued to go on the offense even when everyone was praising Devin Haney. But see, this move really came back to bite Ellie in the ass. Because if you guys know Ellie, what he likes to do is if one party doesn't like him, they don't want him at the training camp, he'll go to the opponent's training camp so he can still make money off of that fight. This is what he did in the Devin Haney Regis Progray fight. He went to Regis Progray's training camp. Matter of fact, that's how Ellie started going to the Robert Garcia gym because Freddie Roach and Ellie end up getting into it. So I say this because now we hear recent news that Devin Haney is in negotiations with Ryan Garcia. And Ryan Garcia just recently came out announcing that he's no longer going to do interviews with Ellie. He doesn't even want Ellie at his gym, which means now Ellie, he's not going to be able to work in either one of the fighters training camp. And now he's apologizing to Devin Haney. We know what time it is. He's trying to do damage control, but it's a little too late. Ellie was trying to put all his eggs in the Javante Tang Davis basket. He kept using Javante as his black card to diss other black fighters, hiding behind him, trying to basically tell people, I have a black friend, so it's okay for me to go out of my way to continue dissing black boxers. But now Ellie is starting to realize the backlash is getting out of control. For over 10 years, Ellie said back for the most part has been flying under the radar and no one has been paying attention to the bias and the disrespectful racist things that Ellie Setback has been saying about black boxers and even other boxers that aren't black. But today, Ellie Setback has been brought to the surface and he is completely highlighted because now you have fighters like Crawford on stage after his biggest win over Errol Spence, dissing reporter Ellie Setback. Then he did an interview at a basketball game and he said, I'm not answering any questions until Ellie Setback is gone. Ryan Garcia just banned Ellie Setback and this all follows Bill Haney calling Ellie a racist, a culture vulture, and putting out a petition to ban him from the sport of boxing. And this is the reason why if you're going to be a real reporter, you have to be extremely professional and you cannot easily be influenced and persuaded by the racist fans on the internet by trying to use their same talking points when you have a microphone in your face. Because what people like Ellie don't realize is those racists who say all that kind of stuff on the internet, they remain anonymous. So they can continue to say a whole bunch of things that makes no sense because they don't have to worry about being held accountable. But you do when you have a name, a face, and you have a microphone and a camera. One more point I wanna make, and I wanna really reiterate this. 
outside of Ellie, there are a lot of fans out there that are not black and they're trying to accuse black American fans of being some kind of traitor for supporting the black fighter, regardless if it's Devin Haney, if it's Javante, if it's any black fighter. I'm gonna make this very clear. If you are not black, you will never be in position to accuse a black American of being a traitor for supporting any black American fighter. Ellie is not the only non-black boxing fan that keeps using Javante Tank Davis as his black card to diss other black boxers. I mean, don't get me wrong, you could dislike whoever you want, but once again, for you to try to tell a black person they're a traitor for supporting another black American boxer in their own country, you will never be in a position to do that, no matter how many black friends you have. I mean, imagine you being a Filipino citizen, you live there. You decide that you're going to live there for the rest of your life. You're a boxing fan. And you're not actually Filipino, but you're a Filipino citizen. Now, just imagine that person telling Filipino boxing fans in the Philippines that they shouldn't be supporting Filipino boxers or they shouldn't be supporting certain Filipino boxers. First of all, that would never even happen because it only happens in America and it's only towards black boxers. With that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Public service announcement. We got a fake reporter doing fake news by the name of Ellie Setback. Not only is this scumbag doing fake news and being a culture vulture, but he's also pitting young African Americans against each other black brothers, brown brothers, and alike. Instead of pushing this boxing agenda forward and asking the right questions and the tough questions, he's creating dissension and division with a microphone and capitalizing on it financially while leaving others to repatch relationships that have been built over quite some time. I say, let the fighters and the teams do the arguing, the debating, the fussing, the fighting, only to make up because they have a mutual respect for their positions. Let's not let some scumbag reporter who's never boxed a day of his life never helped a, anyone in boxing. Ellie setback is cancer to the sport. Although he might celebrate one brother here and there to save face while he destroys another one using another one. Doesn't that sound familiar? Ellie setback with the wrong one that's my son and he's the undisputed champion of the world so this message tonight <laughs> for you Ellie Secback and on your fake news and your fake reporting you know how you carefully use that 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 uh, accent that accent that some of my brown brothers have when you say reporting let me tell you guys about isa israel law firm it is a full service legal practice based in denver colorado an emerging hub for combat sports and high altitude training if you're a fighter inside or outside of the ring and you need a law firm you can trust to fight for you Visit thefighterfirm.com or email help at iilawfirm.com. Legal representation is usually limited to plaintiffs and defendants in Colorado, but iFirm can help anyone in the world with trademarking their business name, logos, and U.S. immigration issues. This brother has been my attorney for a while and helped guide me through all kinds of business and civil issues, so make sure you guys go to thefighterfirm.com.
All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, the fever blisters, diabetic ulcers, this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Dekey Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to lodekey.com. Like them on Facebook and follow them on Instagram.